okay, do you want me to do that again? <laughs> no, it's all good. Hi, everyone. Great to, great to be here with all of you. Um, great to be back in, in Ottawa once again. This is a wonderful place to be in our uh, country's capital. Uh, very much looking forward to our First Minister's meeting tomorrow. Uh, of course, uh, I think it's a positive step that we're, we're all able to get together and have what is one of the most important discussions, I think, that faces our country uh, for the years and generations ahead. So, um, of course, I think Canadians expect that uh, we all get together and sit down and, and have these discussions. I don't think any of us uh, expect a deal uh, to be made tomorrow. I think the Prime Minister himself has said that uh, he doesn't expect that either. And, and so I think what Canadians want is for us to sit down and have uh, a proper discussion and consider the proposal that is before us. So again, very much looking forward to what that proposal will look like. We'll see that for the first time. Uh, tomorrow, and so we know that that will be the beginning of what I hope is real progress for the future of our country when it comes to health care. So I'll leave it at that for right now and just see if any of you have any questions. I can remember Rachel Walsh with the Global Mail. Uh, the, the government sources have said that there will be a substantial offer from Ottawa tomorrow that, that Mr. Trudeau presents to the Premiers, but that it will come with conditions including that the Premiers will not be permitted to shift any of the money that they are currently giving to healthcare to other areas because of the substantial increase from Ottawa. So can you please clarify, have Premiers already agreed that they will not be changing their share of provincial and territorial health budgets based on what Ottawa does? So again, um, thanks for the question. And I know we're all very much looking forward to tomorrow as Premiers to see that proposal for the first time. I think there's been a lot of discussions through the media uh, so far in terms of what some of those uh, things may look like in the future, but until we actually sit down and, and have and be able to see that proposal tomorrow, it's very difficult to make a comment on, on something that we haven't seen. So again, we very much look forward to seeing that uh, proposal tomorrow. How is it difficult to make a comment? Your, your premiers across the country have said their healthcare systems are in crises, are not working, are broken, are crippling, and you're not able to commit to your own constituents that the budget overall will continue to increase with the federal share rather than just being withdrawn from the Look, provincial sit, side? Absolutely, sitting down and having a conversation what is uh, the most important issues that we face across the country. Uh, we are very much committed to better health care in all of our jurisdictions right across this country. And of course, that's why we're sitting down tomorrow with the, uh, the federal government as well in, in the way of an FMM to have those discussions. Uh, we had a proposal out there. They now have a proposal for us. We need to sit down and see what that proposal looks like before we uh, make any comments moving forward on what that will look like. Uh, Premier Ryan, talking to National Post, you've said as recently as when these talks were announced, the official position of the council that you want the federal government to fund 35% of health care costs across the country. Um, I'm wondering if you're willing to move off that number or is any negotiation have to start there? Well, again, we want to see what the proposal would look like. Um, I think we go in, and many of us have said, we'll go in with an open mind to see what that uh, proposal looks like, and then we'll go from there. I think even tomorrow, though, we don't have a lot of time uh, for a meeting tomorrow, and so it'll be difficult to really get into the weeds of what that proposal looks like for each of our jurisdictions. Uh, but, you know, tomorrow is, is, I think, a step in the right direction to be able to sit down and, and have that, that conversation, that continued dialogue. Are you frustrated at all that you are going to a meeting tomorrow having no idea what's on the table and what the Prime Minister is going to offer? Does that feel like an appropriate way to open these negotiations? I would have liked to have seen the proposal ahead of time, there's no question. Uh, but, and again, you know, we'll, we'll go tomorrow and see what that proposal looks like. Um, if we had had it ahead of time, we could have had a more probably fulsome discussion tomorrow, there's no question about that. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm happy that we were able to uh, get a meeting uh, with the Prime Minister tomorrow to have this discussion with him and with all of us um, as the Council of Federation. And thanks for the Air Questions Premier, uh, David Baxter with Global News. Um, what do you see as a reasonable time frame to actually finalize uh, these decisions since, of course, there will be a final decision tomorrow? 
right? I, I think, you know, obviously we've been going through this for two or three years now. Um, this uh, predates me as, as the Premier and the head of, of COF. Uh, but uh, I, I think we want something sooner rather than later. I think we all do. And so uh, I think we can, uh, we can agree on that. We know that there's a federal budget coming up. We want to ensure that those dollars are within that federal budget. And uh, we're, we're hoping to, um, you know, have those discussions again, see it for the first time tomorrow. So then we'll see, you know, how much time is, is needed uh, shortly thereafter. But I can tell you, I think sooner rather than later, I think everyone is, there's a willingness, I think, to move, move forward on that front. With the uh, focus on bilateral talks uh, for things like health, whether uh, one province wants more long-term care help and other province may want more mental health help, does that, in your mind, affect the overall bargaining power of the provinces um, heading into tomorrow? Well, I think, again, we'll have to see what that proposal looks like, um, and, uh, and I won't uh, predict what, what that is going to, to look like um, at this stage. Uh, but certainly we know that there are many areas uh, that we're all facing across the country. Health human resources is a very significant challenge. Um, surgical and diagnostic backlogs, mental health uh, addictions, challenges, uh, and the list go on. There are many areas of commonality, but again, we'll see what, uh, what that looks like and what the proposal looks like tomorrow. Kevin Gallagher with CTV National News. We had uh, NDP leader Jimmy Tink today saying that he doesn't want the federal government to he wants it to make a condition that any of the money would have never be used for some sort of private health care. Obviously, this is something that a lot of provinces are looking at as ways to find other ways of delivering health care to a very stressed system. But where do the premiers stand in terms of that being a non-starter, uh, in terms of expanding any sort of care into the private sector? Well, I think, uh, quite frankly, um, what we've just come through is one of the most significant um, health care crises in, in, in the country, and that is a pandemic. Uh, we need to ensure that Canadians get the surgical and diagnostic procedures that they need when they need them. Uh, right now, we know that we don't have the capacity. That's why there are backlogs. To the extent that we can contract out those services to help deliver those services for Canadians, uh, I think that that's something that uh, the Canadians want to see as well. I think they want to get their health care delivery sooner rather than later. Is there a concern that if governments pay private clinics, that pu the public system will then be further depleted? Well, I think there's also, it's, it's uh, something that's taking place right now, right across the country, uh, with, uh, with um, contracting out with those private clinics uh, to deliver those services. And I think, again, this is about a capacity issue. And I know uh, within Manitoba, certainly, we are increasing the capacity within the public system as well, very significantly, to deliver on these services. And I believe that uh, my, uh, my colleagues across the country are doing the same and will continue to do that to build the capacity that's needed uh, to ensure that Canadians get the health care that they need when they need it. Bonjour, Christian Noël de Radio-Canada. Um, just wondering what a 10-year deal would allow you to do in Manitoba. I'm not sure that I know anything about a 10-year deal. <laughs> so again, I will have to wait for tomorrow. I, I've heard, you know, rumblings of these things, but again, I think what's really important is that we have that ability to sit down tomorrow to have those discussions. If it is a 10-year deal, we'll deal with that at the time. I think we obviously, what is the most important thing uh, for right now is that we look at, uh, when it comes to kind of the Canada health transfer side of things, that we're looking at a long-term sustainable funding model um, for generations to come within our country, and I think that that is what's in the best interest of Canadians. Do you have a feeling the federal government is negotiating in good faith or in bad faith? Well, I, you know what, uh, I hope they're negotiating in good faith, but uh, we'll, we'll see tomorrow what, what, what transpires. I am concerned uh, that we haven't seen a proposal yet and we're sitting down tomorrow to have those discussions, but, but again, we, we do have the opportunity to, to sit down with them tomorrow and it's a positive step in the right direction, but uh, we know that uh, you know tomorrow isn't going to be the be-all and end-all in terms of the future um, of healthcare in our country. It's a beginning, it's a discussion. As the Prime Minister has said, he's not expecting a deal tomorrow to happen. We don't believe so either. Uh, but I do believe that Canadians want to see some sort of a conclusion on this, and uh, we're working in the best interest of all Canadians. Bonjour, Joël Denis de l'Avance de la France. I'd like you to expand on the uh, fact that you haven't seen the numbers yet from Ottawa. What kind of uh, atmosphere does it bring along that meeting? Does that bring along uh, suspicion on your part, on the part of the provinces towards Ottawa, if they don't share numbers before the meeting? 
Well, it makes it more difficult when you're going into a meeting to have a discussion about something that you haven't seen. Uh, but I will say that I'm still looking forward to seeing that proposal tomorrow. Um, and again, there, there's no expectation of a deal uh, to be made tomorrow um, on anyone's part. And so it gives us an opportunity to have those beginning discussions and uh, we'll continue to, to take that collaborative approach and, and, and just see where we, where we want to go um, after tomorrow. Second question, there will be two envelopes. The Prime Minister has confirmed that. One for the global transfer for healthcare and another one separate for separate deals with provinces. What proportion should take those two envelopes? Bigger one for the uh, all the provinces, the healthcare transfers, or a bigger one for separate deals with the provinces? I think um, what Canadians want to see is um, a long-term predictable funding model uh, for uh, our healthcare uh, delivery right across the country. And so I think when we're looking at that, um, whether or not it's a CHT, bilats, whatever that looks like, I think we need to uh, again, we go in with an open mind to see what tomorrow looks like. Um, we know where we stand, but again, that long-term sustainable funding model is, I think, what, what Canadians are really looking for. Yeah. Hi, Premier. Uh, David Cochran with CBC News. Yeah. This has been described and framed as a negotiation and as a proposal, but I wonder if that's really what this is. Because on the bilateral agreements that the provinces and the territories will sign or negotiate with the federal government, there's clearly room for discussion there. But everything leads me to believe that a 10-year proposal with a fixed amount of money determined by the federal government is very likely what we're going to see tomorrow. So is it really a negotiation so much as the federal government saying, here's our plan and we can tailor some of it to your, your local provincial needs? Well, again, David, and thank you for, for that question. And, uh, you know, again, we'll see what the proposal looks like tomorrow. We've seen various things floated out there until I see something um, you know, in writing and before us tomorrow in the way of a proposal, uh, then, you know, we, we can make, uh, you know, our, our comments after that. But even tomorrow, we only have a couple of hours within this meeting, so it won't be a chance for us to digest completely what is in the, the, the minute details of those, of that proposal. So, again, we'll sit down with, a, with an open mind to see what this is tomorrow, and uh, we'll go from there. But the way I see it, it's the beginning of of uh, you know of a real dialogue. I mean, at least we're sitting down at, at the table. It took us a couple of years to get to where we are right now, and so I'm hopeful that this will be a good, positive thing for the future of healthcare in our country. There's lots of reports, though, uh, that this is going to be a 10-year proposal, uh, and some, which is, if you look at the breadth of it and the length of it, it's going to be an eye-popping number uh, that the federal government will be putting on the table tomorrow, at least in the broader conversation uh, about this. So, how difficult? Would it, a big number like that put on the table tomorrow make for the premiers to, to hold out and push back against the federal government if they don't like some of the fine print of what's actually being proposed? Well, I think um, certainly whatever is proposed is more than what we have in the system right now. And so I think we move forward on, on that basis. But, um, you know, again, we'll wait to see what that proposal looks like. Uh, and again, you know, my concern with some of the, the bilateral agreements is is you, you come to a certain point and there's that fiscal cliff in the end after the agreement ends. And so I think what Canadians are looking for is that long-term predictable funding model uh, to continue in, in, the, uh, in the country and to make sure that it's sustainable into the future. And so I think that that's what Canadians want and certainly that's what we'll be continuing to have discussions on. We'll take one more question, please. Hey, Mickey here with the Canadian Press. Uh, what are the deal breakers for you and the other premiers? So uh, I guess we're sitting down tomorrow to see what is before us. Um, I think everyone is going in with an open mind to see what is, uh, you know, what is in the proposal. Um, I think, as I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I do believe it will be more than what is before us uh, you know, today. So uh, that's positive, a positive step in the right direction again. Uh, but again, the, the details are always, as they say, the devil's in the details. We'll see what those details have uh, tomorrow, and um, you know we'll have those discussions as a council of federation moving forward. Yeah, and then what concerns do you have in terms of the New Deal when the federal government right now is talking about being fiscally prudent? Do you see this having any effect on the deal, and, and what concerns are, 
are those for you? Well, I think those are things that we're all balancing, even within our within uh, the provinces and territories as well. Affordability is a big issue out there, and so um, obviously we're taking measures to ensure that we're making life more affordable for, you know, I know in my case, Manitobans. Um, that's very important, but so equally is the long-term sustainability of healthcare funding, and so there can be a balanced approach to that. There's no question, and uh, but both are very both very very important. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Sorry, just to clarify your answer at the beginning. Uh, so if if we go on the fact that right now there's $22 over 100 from the federal government and the provinces are putting in $78, if the federal government increases that to 30, are, are you saying and not answering my question that it's possible that the provinces would cut $10 from their contribution so that it stays at 100? Or are you saying that, that the provinces will maintain their funding while asking the federal government for more. Well, again, how this whole discussion took place is that I know within Manitoba, 40% of our budget is invested in healthcare in the province of Manitoba. You know, over the years, that has encroached in other areas like uh, the delivery of education um, and social services as well. And so we want to ensure that we have enough money for those as well, and childcare as well. So we want to ensure that there's enough money for, for that out there as well. And so uh, whatever money they're looking for, we can ensure that, uh, that this will go towards health care. This is a very important part of what we're doing. Uh, but again, when you're looking at that, that balanced approach, we just want um, you know, fairness in all of this so that there are more monies to, uh, to come to, you know, to health care in the bottom line in our provinces. But it sounds like they're shifting. It sounds like you're looking at shifting provincial funds if the federal government does increase its share. No, so it I, sounds like when you say you have other pressures as well. Well, everyone does, including them. They have pressures as well. And but certainly, when it comes to healthcare, the dollars that they uh, want to send to to us again, we'll see what that proposal looks like tomorrow. But you know, we'll ensure that goes towards healthcare services in our in our provinces and territories. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.